ladies and gents. Got Jock Ross in my background. And you know, he's talking about loving somebody. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard of who Jock, J-O-C, Ross, R-O-S-S, is, but YouTube this young man. I think you'll appreciate him. Not only can he play music, but he can sing music. Ladies and gentlemen, you see this in the background? All of the sea life. Yeah, that's how I feel today. Like just being in the middle of the ocean, relaxing. Why is that? Because in 2001, I was made aware that as the years got to this point, that I would start to lose cognitive abilities. That's why I scheduled the appointment yesterday. I, I've already known this is the second doctor I've seen, and they both determined the same thing. Now, this is just by asking questions, and what I decided to do, because, you know, you can fake it, I decided to be honest with them. I decided to try to explain to them what I go through on a daily basis. Since the operation in 1988, as I said, I've even been getting that date wrong. I've been telling people 1989 um, when it is 1988. My best friend died in 1989. I was thinking it was 19, pay attention, 90, when it was 1989 that he passed away. Um, just before my, well, right after my so-called 21st birthday. Oh, no, uh... 87 was 18, and 89 was 20. So, again, yeah, just before my 21st birthday is when that young man passed away. And in 1990, my son was born. That's the only date I got right is the, uh, the, my son being born the following year. But... What's been happening is I've been allowing myself, I'm doing way too much, and some people realize that they see all the things, all these organizations that I'm trying to help keep organized and keep afloat and the consults and the dealing with lawsuits and dealing with people and, man, seven days a week. Well, that's putting too much of a strain. The only problem is I tried to curtail it. If you've ever listened, I've tried to curtail it, and I can't. So I decided not to fight it anymore. The understanding was is that I'm going to lose the ability to communicate. There was the diagnosis about five years ago of aphasia. Imagine that. I am so glad that it's slowly progressing. We already had the retrograde amnesia. So that's in and of itself something in and of itself. And the doctor did confirm that it's not dementia. Oh, I am so glad I don't have dementia. Oh, Dr. Demento would be so proud of me if I did, though. Um, if you've seen the Weird Al, Weird Al Yankovic story, you would come to understand who Dr. Demento is. And if you existed in the 70s, late 70s, early 80s, the Dr. Demento Show! you would understand who Dr. Demento is. I actually liked him. Um, back to the hotel. I've been trying to get the staff. I, I, when you tell people you have cognitive issues, the first thing people want to do is test you. So at one of our meetings, I made mention of something. I wasn't accusing anybody of anything. I just made mention of a situation. And the person spoke up and tried to defend themselves. And, da -da -da, and I said, excuse me. First, it ain't your turn. Second, nobody's talking about you. You know, Lord have mercy. Then the person 
commented again several moments later, talking about how they did something, and they are sure they did it. So the problem was mine. So ladies and gentlemen, I went back later, checked the emails, and sure enough, they did something, but they did exactly what I said they did and not what they were claiming they did. I might have some cognitive issues, but I'm still the smartest person I know. Now, hold on. There is, and I'm going to, no, if, you, if you're paying attention, I'm sharing something with you of a personal nature. So if you want to hear it, then you're going to hear everything. If you don't want to hear it, then you can turn the video off, <laughs> literally. But I'm going to share something with you because I need people to, wait, hold on. Where's my desktop? Wait, you go to, it ain't letting me have my desktop. I gotta give it a second. I I think the 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 fish that ate my desktop, y'all. Yep, I ain't got no control over my desktop. Hold on, let me get my desktop back. There it is. Woo wee! There go my desktop, man. That's what I was looking for. I need the desktop. Okay. I'm gonna go into this right here, and it's moving a little slow. Oh, because I'm maxed out on both RAM and CPU. Got to refresh that stuff. Oh, it's so refreshing. And it'll be just one second. Oh, look at that. I didn't release memory. Oh, that thing. isn't that what you're talking about, memory, right now? Hold on. By the way, uh, there was another artist besides Mr. Jock Ross that I saw, and I wanted to play him. And I'm looking for him. I may have missed him. Uh-oh, I think I missed him. Jock, where'd he go? I think I may have to go back to the previous screen. Nope, I done lost him, y'all. There's a, the Sheer Element. I was listening to them earlier. They, I, you know, I'm, I'm not too, 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 too impressed. But there was another young man, and... I saw it, and I wanted to take a listen to see who he was and what he did, you know, and I done messed up. I think I done lost him. All right, I'm just going to have to go on, y'all, because he was on a different screen. So, Lord has mercy. I won't be able to play him this day because I don't know where he be. <laughs> I know I played Jock Ross, and he did a change is going to come because he was boned by the river. You know what, ladies and gentlemen, this is taboo because according to the ignorant people, I can't play this. But I'm going to play this because I'm going to tell it to you like it is. This is one of the best versions, and I didn't even mention this fool, but this is one of the best versions of this song. That I done heard. And we all know this man can sing, but it is taboo. I wasn't supposed to be opening this. This is R. Kelly, and he's singing, A Change is Gonna Come. Now, I was opening up something, and it didn't open up. And that's because it may have suggested I clicked on the wrong thing. This is R. Kelly, y'all. And he's singing, a change is going to come. And because of what the young man was, quote, unquote, convicted of, the, oh, no, I'm sorry. I, I do have some problems with that whole trial thing. That was a joke. And his attorneys were jokes. And the whole setting was joke. The parent and the allowance and all of that, I have my opinion. I'm going to keep it to myself because there's just, there's a lot there. I want to show you all something, okay? Um, we're going to do this thing, K-N-O-W-L-E-D-G-E. 
P-U-F-F-S. Oh, Puff Puff the Magic Dragon? No, not that type of knowledge. We're going to go study. This is uh, Paul. And while I talk about this, ladies and gentlemen, when you hear me talking about this, the scriptures, you'll notice I don't play music in the background normally because I don't want to mix up the two out of respect. But this is important for what I need to tell you. Now concerning food offered to idols, we do not have all the knowledge. We do not all have knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. If anyone thinks he is something, he does not yet know it as he should know it. But if anyone does love God, this one is known by him. Ladies and gentlemen, it says if anyone thinks he knows something, <laughs> please understand, I made the comment earlier that I am the smartest person I know. Okay? That's just, it's not uh, me imagining that. And it's not a matter of somebody challenging me. When I say I'm the smartest person I know, there is not a person that can come to me and challenge that. Because I said, I know. Well, I know people smarter than you, and nobody asked you. Do you understand that? Does that make sense? So we can go back to Corinthians. This is Paul. I'm going to read what Paul said at the beginning of the 12th chapter of Corinthians, because there are some similarities. I have to boast. It has not been official, but I will move on to supernatural vision and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in union with Christ who, 14 years ago, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows, was caught away to the third heaven. Yes, I know such a man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, but God knows, who was caught away into paradise and heard words that cannot be spoken and that are not lawful for a man to say. Now, I want you all to understand. He heard words that cannot be spoken. Okay, that's a <laughs> metaphor in so many ways, but that is not to be literal because it was spoken if he heard it spoken. He heard words, and then he says, cannot be spoken. I've always loved that. But he's saying cannot be spoken by man. He says, I will boast of such a man. See, he's saying what he was allowed to go through and what he was allowed to see, he, he'll boast about that man. But he says, I will not boast about myself except for my weakness. For even if I want to boast, I will not be unreasonable. For I would say the truth but I refrain from doing so in order that no one should give me more credit than what he sees in me or hears from me. Just because... No, seven continues, but we're going to stop right there. Ladies and gentlemen, my knowledge doesn't come from me. When I tell you I know things that I've never... That comes from the God that I serve. And I'm very proud to be serving the God that I serve. My service of my God is not the same as your service of your God, for we don't serve the same God. I don't care what you say, how you say it. My God is not your God. I know that's difficult for people to grasp because everybody wants to think that what they have is theirs, and I am not taking that away from you. I'm saying you go and serve your God, but I love uh, Mr. Joshua, who said, but as for me and my household, okay, so as for me and my household, we're going to serve Jehovah. See, my God is called Jehovah. I call him by name because he asked me to call him by name. His word says everyone who calls on his name will be saved. So I call on his name. I've actually experienced that firsthand in so many different occasions where I've called on his name 
in dire situations where my life was on the line, including on that operating table, and all I heard was people talking about miracles afterwards, every single time. So, in 2001, there was a thing that took place known as a choosing. And when that took place, Lord have mercy if I couldn't tell you the amount of knowledge I gained in a three-week period, to say the least. I had to literally ask him to stop because it was too much. I felt my brain was going to explode. Ladies and gentlemen, with that knowledge, I mean, people were like, wait, how did you know that? And we're talking about of scripture because I tell you, I only know about maybe one page, if, if, if at that, of scripture. Only one page. But if you know anything about the scriptures, you know that there's over 1,500 pages. I only know about one page, if that. But the fact that he allowed me to understand it, big, huge deal. So to keep me from becoming overly exalted with this knowledge that I have, I was given a thorn in the flesh, an angel of Satan that keeps slapping me, so that I might not be overly exalted. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might depart from me. But he said to me, my undeserved kindness is sufficient for you, for my power is being made perfect out of weakness. Ladies and gentlemen, I've asked him on many occasions to help me so that I don't end up having the eventuality for which he's shown me that I'm going to have. There's nothing I can do about it. But I do see us getting close to that point, and this is the time period for which I told all of you on video that there was going to come a time when I was not going to be able to do this. We're getting close. So what does Paul says? Most gladly, then, I will boast about my weaknesses in order that the power of the Christ may remain over me like a tent. So I take pleasure in weakness and insults in times of need and persecution and difficulties for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am powerful. Ladies and gentlemen, don't take my word for it. Everybody contacts me because of the knowledge. They don't contact me because they just want to be my friend. I don't have people who contact me simply out of friendship. I know, I know, I know, I know. Some people are going to say that's what they do, and that's they're, they're entitled. That being the case, so that you understand, I don't let people into that spot of friendship. I protect that spot as best I can because that's where I am most vulnerable is friendship. I told you guys about the young man involved in the Bradley Christopher Stark case. That young man who asked me for my help, and I told him, I said, hey, if I help you, we're going to do a 40-60 split on anything that is received. I don't care about that junk. But you know what I cared about? Is integrity. We're supposed to be people of our word. Ladies and gentlemen, that person whom we used to talk at least nine times a week, I haven't heard from him. No email, no communication whatsoever. So I sent him an email two months ago saying, I ain't heard from you, but don't worry about it. You ask me to let it go, I'm letting it go. You ask me not to pursue it anymore. I'm not going to pursue it anymore. But everybody knows about the Bradley Christopher Stark matter. Everybody knows about the Bradley, Bradley Christopher Stark arbitration because of me. But he'll tell you that that had nothing to do with them offering him a settlement. He'll tell you that all of my calling around and all of the videos and all of the commenting had nothing to do but you go to YouTube and you type in Bradley Christopher Stark and you'll see my videos. You go to YouTube, you type in arbitration agreement, and then you type in the name Bradley Christopher Stark or even do SAA and you'll see my videos. Why? Because 
that was the plan was to put so much pressure on them that they couldn't hide it. They couldn't cover it and put it underneath the rug. I wish I could share with you guys the fact that this was before there was subterfuge. The person put me on the line, and he just clicked me over without telling me he was clicking me over. And I started to say something, and when I heard the person was talking, I realized, oh, he clicked me over so that I could hear, but I'm not supposed to speak because this person's not supposed to know I'm on the line. So I remained quiet. And it was an attorney telling him that they were working on a deal that was supposedly $2 billion, a portion of his so-called arbitration with the government, that they were able to find that law that was certified a part of the official government record. I'm like, well, I need you to get a copy of that. I said, that's the most important thing. He said, man, I'm trying. Then he later he told me that they were unwilling to do it and that they were backing out of the deal. Then he had this individual that he claimed was an attorney contact me, and this guy had an attitude, and I told him, look, man, don't contact me again. He told me he wanted me to speak to this attorney. This attorney is sitting up here questioning me. Mother, I don't work for you. Don't you ever call me asking me questions about me. I don't know you. You better justify what you're asking these questions for. And so he says, no, you don't have to worry about it. No, we fired him. Only to understand that that was a friend of the family. They didn't fire nobody. So, so many lies. Well, you know what I don't think he did? If he did that to me, I wonder what he did to Bradley. I wonder what he did to Bradley. I don't think he is actually reaching out to help Bradley at all. I do believe that he did get a settlement. I honestly do. I will tell you guys that, hands down. And this is what people continue to do. I've, I'm going to say it because it's the truth. I've helped so many people earn so much money and here they are. They end up being a whole lot better than what they are. And, you know, they never even contact me and say, hey, you know what? Because of you, I was able to do this and I was able to do that. And I got this much money or because of what you said, I was able to settle. I did get a call from a young man yesterday asking me to help him do the 1099. And I told him, no, that's not part of your consult. The consult was not for me to help you do anything. The consult was for me to explain to you what you needed to do. And then to point you in that direction as to how to do it. It's a consult. It is not a tutorial ship, but not a mentorial ship. Oh, God, that was a um, 30 minute conversation. But see, the problem is that conversation wasn't with me being mad at him or angry or not liking this or liking that. It was just me trying to get him to understand he needs to stop looking for excuses and just do the work. So far, I haven't met too many people who've actually listened to the consult and did the things they were supposed to do. And you know why they don't do it? They said because they're afraid. I spoke with somebody yesterday who said that they were afraid of the IRS. And I told them, that's right, the IRS, that's what they're designed for. They're designed to make you scared. They're designed to make you not want to communicate with them. Ladies and gentlemen, the IRS is just tax collectors. So if they want to assess a penalty or a fine, let them assess their penalty and fine, and you just take that penalty and fine and you write that junk off. It's the cost of doing business with that corporation. I'm sorry. I thought people would understand this stuff right now. The government issues you a fine. The government issues you um, a penalty. Ladies and gentlemen, you simply write that junk off. That's all you have to do. Um, this is what the new program that I am helping to put together. We have people who understand it now. It took it took some time to get them on the same level. 
but I'm helping to put this together. You got a judgment from a court for hundreds of thousands of dollars, then we're going to have you write that junk off. We're going to have you assess that penalty. You're going to write it off as a business expense because remember that all capital name is a business. It's a corporation. And you're going to write it off as a business expense. And then you're going to assign those credits to the case. You're going to assign them to the judge. You're going to, not the judge, but the clerk of the court. The same way if you were writing a check. You're going to assign the credits to them. Because it's a business relationship. It's a partnership. You guys are in contract with one another. The law permits you to do this. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, eventually they will try to do something to stop you from doing this. But right now the law says you can do this. All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I bought myself a camera system. I got rid of the old camera system made by a company called Zazi, Z-O-S-I. I gave it to my neighbor um, in exchange, $600 worth of cameras and equipment. He's going to come by and help take care of a couple of things. But with that being said, I even brought the neighbor into the the spot training. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, this camera system, I have it hooked to one of my televisions, and I'm using this television as simply a monitor. And all I can tell you is I can see everything just as crisp and just as clean. It's as if, I mean, this was a high-definition camera, and it's every single one of them is giving me that, even at night. It is bright enough for it to make out all the details. If you were holding up an ID, these cameras would be able to see what your ID said. Even if you were at 40 feet away, it would be able to read every line on the ID. So I like this system. The other system, I could see things at night, but it wasn't as sharp. It wasn't as bright. This camera system actually has lights attached to it that shine directly on the area, and then it has an alarm that goes off, and I kind of like that technology. Well, it's working for me. Why? Because I live in a valley, and my nearest neighbor is over a mile away. And so when people are approaching my property, I want to know who they be. If the popos come knocking, as Maxwell would say, I want to know when the popos are coming knocking. And we're going to go ahead and go out this with R. Kelly in my background, y'all. I'm very impressed with this camera system. Now, look, I will do the best I can with providing people information, but many of you want to do that YouTube thing. You want to be commenting in emails and commenting under videos. You will stop that. I don't care if you, you got questions and if you just got to say something because I said something that got your attention. Uh-uh. Sorry, it don't work that way. There are certain people I allow to call me. Technically, everybody I've done a consult with has the ability of calling me. That's why they have the number. They can call and ask questions. I permit that. That's one of the benefits of the consult. I will do follow-ups, not on new questions, new things, uh, 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 on what we talked about during the consult. Follow-up. Nobody else does that. You cannot go to a single attorney and have a consult with that attorney and tell them, hey, I got some other questions. Some of them will say, yeah, go ahead. But having their personal phone number, no, they'll give you their office phone number. And then just taking your call, uh-uh, that don't happen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, while, while R. Kelly is going to movies and while he's going downtown, I'm going to go ahead and end this because I got to go take a shower to get ready to go to this doctor's appointment. And while I go, I got a bunch of things to go listen to. But see, I'm so distracted this morning. I've been distracted all morning. Ever since I woke up, and it's because of being up for almost those full 24 hours yesterday, having all of those things go on and having that meeting with my spot trading. I, it's called, I think it's called e Eonic Valuation or something like that. 
Um, we're going to get that group started, train them, and they'll be able to train the people they bring in. And that way, this is perpetual. And as I told them, we can take and create a group eventually that is big enough that's able to do the same thing on the regular market. And even if the stock market should crash tomorrow, remember, the stock market, even if it would crash tomorrow, this will work when the stock market reopens after the crash. This very same process will work right after that so people can earn right after that. Like I said, I understand it. I get what they're doing. And not everybody's going to explain to people what they're doing in a situation like that, but I'm explaining to you guys exactly how they're able to do it. Thank you, R. Kelly. See, listen to him. And what's, what, 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 what's, what's going to happen? Yeah, but what's going to happen? Are you sure about that? See, R. Kelly, he says, say, yeah. All right, got to go, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good day. Have a good night. About to yawn, because I'm tired. See y'all later.